All right, guys. Hey, my name is Dr. Sharnel Wilberton Sihan. I am here with Craig Walker, my co-host for True TV, The Truth Matters. How's it going? Living the dream. This is it. Nearly Christmas. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And of course, we're here with Laura Eisenhower. She's been with us many, many times. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And then Marissa is sort of with us. Um, Hi. Hi, everybody. Nice to hear in voice anyway. <laughs> awesome. Um, before we get started, I just want to remind everybody to please go to um, drsharnell.com and get on the newsletter. And you know what you could do to help us subscribe? It's kind of a big deal. Um, they're messing with us. So if you hit the subscribe button, we have noticed now that I could see the stats that like almost 60% of the people who watch our show don't aren't subscribed. So that messes with the algorithms and it got us stuck. Um, you know, at one point we had 25,000 plus followers or whatever people and they took our channel down and we are trying to get back to that and more and beyond to make sure we can get the truth out and encourage people, especially in this time. So you could do your due diligence and help us out and hit that subscribe button. And um, that would really be helpful. But anyway, uh, today's subject is quite interesting with the season. Um, with Christmas being here, I even wore my Christmas like shirt. <laughs> Craig. Didn't even think about it. Didn't even think about it, to be honest. I have got one as well. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to talk about pagan Christmas. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What do you guys got to say about that? Well, yeah. I definitely think that uh, the son of God could be the son of God. There's a son, son, S-U-N and S-O-N thing going on for sure. That's right. Winter solstice. And just the sun, you know, it being shortest day of the year and then it beginning to increase is sort of representative of the birth of the sun. But that's on the 21st. And as we know, Christmas uh, and the way it's celebrated and how we see a lot of holidays has a lot to do with consumerism and consumption. And, and that's not really I, I don't feel people really connecting in with nature and its cycles as much as just. Um, the traditional stuff, which, which is fun to get together with family when you're raising kids to kind of feel the pressure to do it the traditional way because of family tradition and friends. And, but uh, it definitely, as most holidays are, are a bit of an inversion, but it's really what we make of it too. So we don't want to just like dump on it. Right. But uh, it's really good to look at the true meaning. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> funny, I've been, um, I actually recorded a, 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 a video that I was going to put on. I decided not to because A, we were doing this one, and B, I was thinking, mm, because I'm really seeing this pushback against <clears throat> Christmas um, from many communities. Um, you know, some saying it's pagan, we shouldn't celebrate Christmas, and others saying, um, oh, it's like you said, Laura, it's just pure consumerism. You know, we need to get back to the, the true meaning. And then my question is, well, to you, what is the true meaning? And most people say the birth of Christ, um, like Marissa was, was suggesting. Um, and what I'm finding out is a lot of people take something different from, from Christmas. Me personally, you know, I love, it's, it's a really magical time. You know, obviously I've got young kids, a young family. Um, and I think even energetically, spiritually, there's a, it's, it's a very magical time. And I saw, um, uh, I read an article it said that there is a there is a measurable energetic what they describe as a love bomb on the planet at Christmas time with all the gift giving, um, all the, the happy times and and you know families getting together and kind of remembering what makes us human, um, and and I I love it and and for people to sort of start to say we shouldn't celebrate it I'm like I don't get it I don't understand it. <laughs> got any thoughts on that? I agree. I, it's really what we make of it, and. Exactly just to have family come together and gift giving and all that is, you know, really beautiful. And the consumerism part of it is more like the matrix, but I mean, families coming together and sharing gifts and the stockings and just the tree, you know, all of it. It's what's the harm really, you know, I mean, even though it's being pushed on humanity in a way that might have its inversions, you know, 
we, we, we got to enjoy the good and, and not throw it all away. Right. And appreciate what it really represents, but family coming together and everything is, and it is magical, all the lights and everybody getting excited and just, it's pretty cool. I also and think kids that, as well. Sorry, Marissa, go, go for it. Mm-hmm. I also think there's something to the fact that, well, December 22nd is a big pagan holiday and that's when a lot of human sacrifice happened mm-hmm. and the Catholic church took it over and wanted to claim it as Jesus's birthday because they wanted to get the people away from the pagan sacrifices. So I think, you know, to look back on why it happened is kind of an interesting thing. And um, I do agree that this is a holiday that we all celebrate and it's really a beautiful thing and it's the birth of Jesus. And why is it on the 25th? Because that's the birth of the sun, the birth of the sun God, the birth of the new life, which is really beautiful. Um, But then there's also the theory that Jesus was really not a Capricorn. He wasn't born on December 25th. He's really a Pisces. And there's some people who have done like an astrological backtrack with the three wise men and the star of Bethlehem and suggested that maybe, you know, maybe he was actually a Pisces. So I think there's something interesting about that. But Uh, The fact that the Catholic Church, it was the Catholic Church who switched the dates and said, "Okay, we're going to make this pagan holiday. We're going to we're going to take it and own it and get the people away from the human sacrifice. It wasn't necessarily the pagans that were sacrificing as much as like the Mm -hmm. Satanists, right? Right. The Satanists. Sorry. But yeah, it was an Illuminati Illuminati holiday. It was Mm -hmm. December 22nd, the day they sacrificed. That was a big human sacrifice. And by the way, uh, Marissa's birthday is on the 25th. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's really funny. It's Thank you, Laura. What's really funny is for the longest time, I was like, oh, it's the darkest day of the year. But I didn't realize it was really December 22nd. And December 25th is really like the birth of the sun. So it's like a beautiful day when you think about it. It's like when the sun starts growing again and, and is reborn. So. And, and wow. doesn't that tie in with, with the, the Christian message, you know, the yeah. birth of the sun? Um, you know, like I say, I've heard, you know, Jesus was born in April. I've heard Jesus was born in September during the Feast of Tabernacles. I mean, whichever it is, it doesn't matter when we celebrate that birth and the new birth and, and the new creation and all these brilliant things that, like you say, at this time of year, we have the winter solstice, the you know the shortest uh, and darkest day of the year. And then there is the, kind of like this, this cosmic hope. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, brighter days are coming and that's the message. And it's like, Let's just enjoy it. Let's embrace it. Let's, you know, and when we get together with family and celebrate and eat, drink and be merry, you know, we don't do it often enough in the West. I, you know, in, in the East, they're always feasting, you know, mm-hmm. there are loads of celebrations, but we, we don't have as many over here. So we need to take what we can get, I think. I agree, especially in this crazy world, which, you know, we've got um, an ex president and his wife. Um, producing a movie that that has us fighting and killing each other right, right? Mm-hmm. on the cusp of our, our our most beautiful holiday and people are talking about this and it's kind of eclipsing the the glory and the warmth and the family vibe of of Christmas mm-hmm. and I think you're right we should take happiness and joy this is a season of joy wherever and whenever we can absolutely agree Speaking of joy and all of that, I was looking up even some of the symbolism with like um, mistletoe. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have looked into this, but it was pretty interesting. Um, It was a symbol of peace. And apparently when they would bring, like if they were fighting war situations going on, if they would bring mistletoe, everyone would drop their weapons. And Mm -hmm. they're kind of like a ceasefire kind of situation, which isn't like kissing. But, you know, we're supposed to kiss under the mistletoe or whatever. So that's kind of interesting. Snoke finding the nearest hot chick and dangling some mistletoe. <laughs> that's like, I think that's really interesting. What, what, what also is interesting is just the true story of St. Nick and mm-hmm. how he was just such a generous soul. And, yeah. and just some of those old stories about who St. Nick was. Because we, we've got the whole Jesus birth 
But then we have the Santa Claus. And uh, some people are like, you know, Santa is Satan. And <laughs> why do we have to demonize everything? I don't know. Right. I mean, I don't know. It's uh, but but I mean, the true story, I think it was a Norwegian yeah. folktale, right? About St. Right. Nick. So I actually looked it up. Father Christmas, other known, otherwise known as St. Nicholas, was a patron saint for the poor and the prostitutes living around the fourth century AD. Generous bishop, also known for giving gifts. I know it goes back even further than that with like the whole Scandinavian thing. Um, it said that in the Scandinavian, it was a bearded old man called Odin. Um, who is Germanic pagan tribe traditionally portrayed as an old man with a white beard with an eight legged horse called Slefnir, who would ride across the skies just like Santa's reindeer during winter, and kids would fill their booties and their booties and carrots with straw and leave them in the chimney. And Odin would fly around and give presents to all the kids and put them in their stockings and stuff. So, um, that's kind of cool. Um, it wasn't until the 30s when Coca-Cola created the whole Santa-like image. And that's when things um, kind of shifted. Let's yeah. talk over. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's also the story about St. Nick punching Arius in the face at the Council of Nicaea. Did you guys ever hear about that? No, please, please tell us. All right, I found this. Uh, modern day depictions of St. Nicholas paint him as a jolly old man. But however, in some medieval churches, uh, St. Nicholas slapped Arius at the Council of Nicaea, which is also where they got rid of women and mm -hmm. the female God and took the story of Thecla out and, uh, took women as deacons and priests. They got rid of them in the Council of Nicaea, and that was officiated by Constantine, who had his wife killed, and his son. But anyway, I digress. So yeah, he he punched or slapped Arius, and they had a bit of a disagreement <laughs> at the Council of Nicaea. So it's kind of interesting, all these stories about St. Nick, you know? I had no idea he was around at the Council of Nicaea. I mean, obviously, I know that that was where you know, the Roman Empire basically couldn't contain what was going on sort of throughout their empire. So they, mm -hmm. they took it on as the state religion. Mm -hmm. And um, and sort of that's where a lot of the manipulations occurred, wasn't it? <clears throat> From yeah, the original but... message, the Christ message, you know. I did not know St. Nick was involved with that. So I've learned something today. <laughs> and so I, I just love all these stories and talking mm -hmm. about what the origin stories and what may or may not have happened. So I was really looking forward to this today. I just thought of a terrible joke, which might be offensive, but when you said St. Nick <laughs> helped prostitutes and children, I was thinking, ho, ho, ho. Is that where that comes from? <laughs> All <Sorry>. three of them. <laughs> uh, 100%. 100%. That's exactly where it came from. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What about the tree? Explain that. The Christmas tree. The Chris well, there's like a, I have a, they say the sacred tree of the winter god dru druids believe that the spirit of their gods resided in the tree. And then I also heard that most ancient pagans knew the tree represented Nimrod, recreated into Tammuz. And then pagans also looked upon the tree as a phallic symbol. And the wreath was really the female yoni. So there's that. But then... There's also the, like Eve was the tree and according to the Gnostics, when she was avoiding uh, the Archons. So there's that. And then Laura, you talk about the tree a lot too. Yeah, I mean, well, tree of life, but I mean, as far as the, the Christmas tree, mm -hmm. it really depends what you know, culture, I mean, uh, the tree can symbolize like fertility and um, renewal, longevity, mm -hmm. rebirth. Um, and there are some traditions that they would plant trees instead of cut the trees down. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I like that better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, branches and bushes because uh, of the tree of life are considered a sign of like immortality. And maybe that has something to do with um, 
just the birth of the sun and the growth of, of, you know, trees, but it really, you know, depends. Um, but ancient Druids, what I've come to understand is it, it represents like strength, wisdom and longevity. But I don't think that it was about like cutting down the trees and putting it in the house. And, you know, I don't want to frown down on that, but it, it'd be great if we did cut down those trees to replace them and plant new ones. That'd be a good thing. <laughs> yes. I always feel bad cutting down a tree or buying even, even lately like flowers. It kind of bothers me. Like I don't mind getting a plant. But we've always had a fake tree and a couple times we did get like a real one and like I feel it in my body. <laughs> it makes me sad. I agree. Like the saddest day to me of the year is January 2nd when you see all the trees out on the street that were thrown away okay. after the holidays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm curious, does anyone have a Christmas tree up, number one, of those of you guys watching? Do you? I don't even have my tree up yet, by the way. Um, I've got young kids. Mine's been up for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys have, if you guys are watching and you have your tree up, give me a thumbs up. And then I want to know, is it fake or real? I'm just curious. Mine's fake. <clears throat> Yours is fake? Same one every year, yeah. Yeah. Do you have your tree up, Laura and Marissa? I don't have a tree yet. Lord. My kids aren't going to be here, which is probably the first Christmas I haven't been with them. And we never over when they were younger. Yeah. I mean, with young kids, it's like they yeah. love that magic, right? Or just the, the decorated Christmas tree. And yeah, we usually did not get real trees. But, I, you know, like decorating <clears throat> a tree that's already outside. And <clears throat> being around like the tree that's growing in our yard. <clears throat> we did. Yeah, I mean the smell. I love the smell, but oh, yeah. you, can do, you can diffuse like evergreen essential oils or something, and still have the smell. Or I actually mop with pine, like not pine as in like the chemical pine. Like I use essential oils, and it makes the house smell. But I don't know. I just feel it's kind of like fishing. I can never even put the worm on on the on the hook because I just mm -hmm. feel it. It's the same way with like. Flowers yeah. and trees here lately. Yeah, it's, it's hard to squish a worm on while it's wriggling around. It's just like I'm just like like harpooning you. <laughs> I use my book. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was reading something. Does anyone know what Saturnalia is? Maybe Marissa yeah. knows. Isn't that? I mean, isn't that part of the uh, solstice, right? I'm looking at, um, you know, again, yeah. like the Satan, Santa kind of mm -hmm. occult calendar. Um, I'm looking that up now. Uh, it says that Saturnalia was originally a day of feasts, but then it became three days and then five mm -hmm. days. But it doesn't really explain what Saturn, maybe Saturn, like the return of Saturn or something. I don't know. Is it's that like... Is that the winter solstice, though? Saturn it says Saturnalia does not mark the winter solstice, which oh. then became December 25th. I think that was, it's mid-December Saturnalia, and it is about the... Saturnalia, um, thank you. That's how you say it? <laughs> yeah, it, I think it has to do with agriculture and Saturn being connected with that. And um, fertility kind of more fertility rituals yeah and there's a dark aspect of saturn but then there's the higher aspect of saturn mm -hmm. um I, I i'm hearing it's about the hope of harvest a bright future during the dark winter saturn used to be a sun now we have the dark saturn but every planet's got it's kind of shadow side so mm -hmm. you know saturn is the ruler of capricorn and when we get into december we're in the capricorn season so it might have something to do with that mm. I'd like to ask, does anyone else here think that there is genuinely war on Christmas? So, for example, here in the UK, we've never said happy holidays, as an example. It's always mm -hmm. been an American thing, but it, people are starting to say it over here now. And some people are kicking off, saying like, oh, no, no, it's, it's Merry Christmas, not happy holidays. I mean, as Americans, what do you think of that? Do you, do you think it is an attempt to take the Christmas away from the festival? Or, or what, do, what do you think about it? <laughs> I don't know, but I know you guys have Boxing Day, right? Yeah, we have Boxing Day, yeah. 
Yeah. And maybe you could tell us what that means. I don't know. I, 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 I'll pass that to somebody else. Uh, I mean, I think everything has to be like so. People are, are just getting so wound up over words and political mm -hmm. correctness, or don't say this. This is offensive. You have to say that. People need to just calm down. I mean, it's the intention that is stronger than the words. I, mean, I actually think that there's um, a genuine assault on God anyway. So any attempt to take God out of the equation, whether it be in Christmas or in the schools or pretty much anywhere, I, I feel like um, I think that's part of it. I do. I think... And um, I, I love saying Merry Christmas to people. I love seeing Christmas trees. I love the holidays being celebrated. And I love going back to the original meaning of Christmas, whether Jesus was a Capricorn, which I don't really think he was, or a Pisces. I mean, it makes more sense to me that he's a fish anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we celebrate. I like the whole singing, you know, mm -hmm like the candles, the present, I don't know. It, for me, it's just like being around family mm -hmm. and all that. But yeah, the word thing, you know, Merry Christmas versus Happy Holiday or whatever. It's it's just whatever. Um, I know there was a big deal with that a few years ago where people were like, oh, they're canceling Christmas and stuff. And like I used to even like shorten Christmas with like X must. And like someone went mad crazy on me and going, oh, you're canceling Christmas. Like, I'm not canceling Christ. I'm, I'm just shortening words. You know, maybe conscious language isn't the best way to do that. And I switched it up. I'm, forgive me, you know, but people get panties in their wad like over everything sometimes. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? Yeah. Oh, uh, also Saturnalia was... Uh, it a hedonistic time too. People went like wild and crazy and did all sort of stuff and they actually wore masks. And I think it's changed over different cultures. I just thought I'd add that a time of like no restraint that you could just, just go like kind of crazy wild. Um, but yeah, I don't know about all that with saying Merry Christmas or happy holidays. The only reason I say happy holidays is because Thanksgiving and Christmas are so close to each other and then there's New Year's so it's sort of like I'm just covering the whole thing <laughs> when I say happy holidays right. and also like you know I have a lot of Jewish friends so I'll say happy holidays because Hanukkah. you don't want to leave anybody out either and you want to be inclusive so yeah but I also, I also say happy Hanukkah I mean which is going on right now. So happy Hanukkah, everybody who celebrates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I just celebrate everybody, and I celebrate mm -hmm. life, and I celebrate that, you know, just the fact that we're still here in all this mess and mm -hmm. not, like, completely insane. I mean, some people might think I'm insane, and I might be a little bit, but <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. the fact that I'm, like, still walking around and having conversations and can actually get words out sometimes – you know, it's like, oh, my God, I'm not in my pajamas sitting in a crazy house right now. Thank you. You know, <laughs> I think we're all going to hang on sometimes, you know, especially in this time right now. It seems like, you know, there's a lot of trauma going on and but there's also a lot of awakening, too. And there's, you know, connecting with your like minded tribe, which is great. And discovering what what your mission is on the planet and really figuring and uh, embracing that so there's that too i mean it's kind of like you know the pearl being formed under pressure i feel like that's where we are that's where humanity is right now for those of us who are really embracing and and going for the ascension timeline yeah. I'll tell you what, something's definitely going on because um, we know that we had David Icke on last week and his daughter passed, Carrie, and yeah. condolences to uh, that whole situation and their family. But um, it's so weird because when I woke up to that message, I went on Facebook and another friend of mine, their son passed the same day. 
and another person got in a car accident. I mean, there's like multiple people on that day that all just gone. And there's a lot of people choosing to go right now. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, and, sorry, I was just say a lot of friends of ours, um, <clears throat> mutual friends of all ours, said that they've been feeling a major timeline shift like recently, like literally the last 24 hours as well, for probably the past week. Like something huge is, is really shifting. And I just often think sometimes maybe people just choose just to go like transition or whatever, um, you know, whether, whether it be a subconscious thing or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I just think it, it's certainly this time of year, for, for me anyway, it is a time to remember sort of like what makes us human. And, and you know, we, these things that are happening, and certainly the past several years, past few years with everything that's been going on, it's like the way I look at it is, is, is you know, family, the, the solid, healthy family unit is the backbone of a strong society. And as we all know, that is massively under attack. They're trying to really destroy that. So I think it, it's good to remember that and also to, to offer a handout to those who might not have that as well. Like story here in the UK, I think it was, I think it was last year or the year before, um, with, with all the 2020 situation that was going on. They were talking about, oh, you're not allowed to do this at Christmas. You're not allowed to go and see your family at Christmas and all this kind of thing. And of all people, uh, it was the Muslim community here in the UK that stood and said, we'll hold the fort, Merry Christmas, go and see your family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they love families, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I just think it, it, it doesn't matter what your religion is, what your faith, what you, what you believe or whatever. There is something about this time of year where we remember what it is to be, you know, with families and loving each other and sharing gifts. And, you know, if people call that pagan, then so be it, whatever. But the fact is, I think it's a good thing. And I think we need to protect that, in all honesty. Yeah. And, and the pagan way is not, you know, dark. It's just with anything, there's infiltration or the inversions with the deep state knowing the significance of these particular times in the earth cycles and how significant they are to, you know, do something in order to gain the upper hand over humanity. So yeah, 2020, which was such a significant time for transformation and growth, targeted us coming together, um, the isolation when it's a time of unity consciousness, breathing in the breath of life, you know, the ether energies, because we're in that window of Ophiuchus that started to come in in 2010 when the sun started to move through the 13th sign, which is the pouring of the mother love, of the mother God coming back and anchoring into the planet and how that ether energy purifies our blood. And then we hear about blood clots and, you know, all this stuff trying to keep the damage to the mitochondrial DNA. So the connecting with family and the honoring of the role of the mother and balancing out the patriarchy and all these different things that are part of the growth period of humanity to get back into balance, which is encoded in our DNA and in our soul to, you know, begin to move into based in our soul history and our memories is constantly being targeted because they're leveraging amnesia. They're leveraging uh, vulnerability. They're leveraging fear in order to convince people that this is a good thing to do. But like you said, it really is trying to wipe away the opportunity to come together, which is where those great memories um, are reflected back upon later in life. Like, oh, yo, know, being close to your cousins, your grandparents and your parents. And the biggest thing about unity consciousness is diversity and harmony is oneness. So the more we embrace the different ways that we go about things, knowing that the common thread is family and love and community and, you know, just seeing just the, the look on our children's faces when we just give them that kind of celebration. Um, yeah, in a time of ascension, all that's been targeted is because that's really growing. That's really growing and expanding. And uh, and that's why all these trigger words and 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 just social media uh, tactics to, to really seed that amongst each other. So there's so much divide and conquer. But the most important thing is, you know, I mean, the family unit is everything. Um, and I think no, no criticism on any religion, but it's really bizarre to think, you know, of the celibacy and the priesthood. My father is a celibate priest and he's amazing, but um, just uh, the, the loss of the feminine in religion has been a very interesting one that um, I know many have uh, attempted to change, but uh, 
Yeah, I don't know what your guys' thoughts are, if that has anything to do with anything, but we don't hear about the birth of Mary Magdalene or the, we don't celebrate the mother like we celebrate the Christ figure, you know? It's kind of interesting because the mother is so important <laughs> to mm -hmm. all of us, the mitochondrial DNA that's been damaged that brings us back into connection with Mother Earth. It's, we just, and that has become just, oh, maiden mother crone or something that um, not a lot of people talk about, which has a lot to do with all these cycles the mother. So I don't know what your thoughts are, but. Well, speaking of the mother too, I think going back to the Santa, uh, who, who was the saint who gave to the prostitutes and the kids, single moms. Um, for me, yes, family is a big time, but also giving back is a big time. I know like I do my best to find families and or people who need something in this time, you know, and like give them food, give them presents, give them extra stuff. Like do be the Santa in that situation. Um, not just to my own kids and my own family, but for people who may be not able to do that for their own kids or, you know, I was, dude, I'm telling you for like three years as a single mom for me, I barely kept the lights on, let alone have a Christmas tree or presents. Uh, you know, I was selling my blood plasma like three times a week for like three years just to get diapers and, you know, all of that stuff. So giving back and giving to other people and helping other people to me is not just celebrating the moms, but just helping, you know, but I, know, I think Marissa was going to say something. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I just think what you said is really beautiful. Um, about giving, about giving back. And um, I was struck by a story I heard about the Virgin Mary, the Blessed Mother, when she gave birth to Jesus. And the story is that there was a midwife who was sent who didn't believe that it, that she, that Jesus was a virgin birth and gave her an exam. And when she took her hand out her hand was on fire and it was only the fire was only put out when she touched, when she touched Jesus. So that was his first miracle. So that was at the birth of Christ there. Wow. How interesting. Yeah. So, but I agree that the, the mother, I mean, the mother's always taken out of the, like somehow lessened and. Well, it's like Easter. Well, I mean, yeah. Exactly. It used to be Ishtar, right? It used to be about the... I love what you said, though, about giving back. I mean, I think that's the most rewarding part. Mm -hmm. And I and I can relate, Charnel. I was a single parent and did not have a whole lot. And, uh, and there's so many, you know, gifts that we can give as far as just the time we spend together, like going for walks, going for hikes, just, you know, the things that aren't attached to a dollar bill or going to the store and putting down hundreds of dollars and having your kids expect like all the big things. I mean, and this world of currency is so inverted too. We have to get back to the abundance of our souls and how we can manifest beautiful, you know, things in the, in the giving back is, you know, so huge. I love that. I mean, like soup kitchens and putting on meals and especially if, if, yeah, I just wanted to add that, but. Yeah, I love that. It's like the best, again, it's like the best of humanity comes out, isn't it? Like just tonight on a, a local Facebook group <clears throat> uh, where I am, so, uh, a woman had put a status on <clears throat> saying, I, I can't afford uh, much for my kids this year. Is there anybody know of any charities that are like helping out or anything like that? <clears throat> At the last time I checked, it, it was well over 60 comments on it just saying, give us your address. We'll send you some presents for your oh. kids sort of thing. Um you know, and it's just like, this is what it's about. You know what I mean? This, this is, and when it, when I said at the beginning, <clears throat> there's like a love bomb on the planet. This is what it's talking about. I think there's an energetic effect on the planet that raises its frequency at this time of year. And I, and I think we need to protect that and we need to encourage it and, um, and, and maintain that. I mean, we should be doing it <clears throat> all year round, surely, but even, even just this time of year, it's just a time to reflect and remember. And I just think that's, that's interesting that the time of year that it is, the darkest time is when humanity really steps up. Um, and yeah. those it kind of reminds me of the movie Starman. And there's like the most beautiful line in there that Jeff Bridges says. And 
he says humanity when times are at your very worst that's when you become your very best mm -hmm. and i'd like to think that's true and i really hope it is and well, i like yeah go keep going no i just i hope it is true and i mean it definitely is true around this time but when we see like natural disasters or just events happen mm -hmm. you know communities really come together and the priority of just you know, love overrides everything, which is huge. And I just want to say something else. I mean, just about the mother energy, Friday the 13th, that's a day of Venus and the 13th is connected to the 13th mother arc, um, which represents like the mother. And uh, it's completely demonized um, as like a horrific day, something to be scared of. So this Baphomet dark mother reversal energy, you know, is so strong. And I don't think these holidays take away from that. Again, it's the intention, which is everything. Um, but it's just interesting, you know, to look at. I think that this is like the one time I actually like an inversion. You know, <laughs> the, the Catholic Church inverted it's your birthday, satanic, <laughs> you know, um, ritual of, you know, uh, human sacrifice and then they took it away and be it became christmas so i'm kind of down with the church right there <laughs> <laughs> oh they did something good yeah <laughs> who knew <laughs> right but well, laura I, we have done i think three years in a row a winter solstice interview mm -hmm. like what are you seeing for the coming year like what like have you looked and charted out like what's going on or where we're at with that? we will be doing a webinar January 26th about it. And I, all I can say, I mean, you know, a lot of planets are going direct. Pluto is moving into Aquarius. It was retrograde for quite some time. So early January, it's going to go direct. So Pluto and Aquarius is a, a big sort of growth period for humanity. And again, we're going to see a lot of, a different attempts to derail this particular growth period. And transhumanism is really the inversion of the Uranus energy, which connects with our higher mind, us being the more advanced technology, switching on our dormant DNA. The inverted sort of dark Uranus is transhumanism, dark technologies, and this sort of movement into what one would maybe call utopia, all these advancements in science and um, uh, uh, technology that are really replacing our soul development. And with all the attempts to put nanoparticles in our bodies through you know what and and 5g and gmos and our skies being sprayed you know it's really linking a person into uh this um ai assimilation and we see a lot of people acting out and doing things that they normally wouldn't do because they're not really being themselves anymore so there's going to be a huge sort of growth period of a lot of individuals and with Uranus being the ruler of Aquarius in the sign of Taurus, it, it has the opportunity to be really like grounded and anchored. So when we're grounding and anchoring the higher mind in our solar, or like in our lower chakras, in the physical plane, you know, as the earth is ascending, the vibration begins to rise. And I, I really feel because the Uranus energy is so electric and so powerful that this is a really strong time of bifurcation because if you see Uranus moving through the seventh house usually breakups happen if you see it moving through the tenth house usually a person leaves their job and moves on to something that's more authentic and true to them and that Uranus gives us all the shock and upheaval and breakthroughs that we would need to be more in our authenticity but we can sometimes mistake it for uh, something falling apart so it also rules breakdown and shock and like why is this happening but we don't realize it's an upgrade so if they can come up with inversions that um steer us away from the upgrades that are naturally happening within us and our connection to earth, then yeah, we'll just get more dragged into this kind of stuff. And, and it's going to be hard to hold a vibration in a space with that timeline anymore. And I just see this is really where the split's happening, but there's a bridge between the split. It's not like we're not going to see or witness this other timeline, but we're going to be so involved in building uh, on our own terms and, and cutting the cords perhaps with, the government mm -hmm. structures and the things we, we, that we keep relying on and, and realizing we, we just need each other and we just need to allow this to take place within us so that we cut the cords and we're not in this dependency bond with the system that 
keeps tricking us and fooling us. Even though there will be positive developments, I, I see a lot more sovereignty and a lot more strength and people coming together. Uranus rules the 11th house, community, um, networking. And, uh, and I think that Pluto will help us to release and transform out of any divide and conquer. And, and the strong star seed minded or, or earth warriors or whatever you want to call it, people that have really come here for this time will be leading that by example. So I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to talk too much, but there's a lot. I'll be doing a webinar about it and um, a, a lot more about, yeah, Neptune eventually moving into Aries and Jupiter going direct and Saturn moving back into Pisces. Um, and so what we see on the world stage is these unholy wars and things going on in these particular locations. Cause the dark Saturn doesn't want us to step into the higher octave of Saturn, which is self mastery, which means that we overcome the tyranny, the rules and restrictions. And we begin to work with the law of structure on our own terms, what works for our body, what works for, you know, a protocol or a structure that we can incorporate into our lives that helps us to thrive instead of represses us and blocks us from our greater potential. So it's really going to be about choice as always. But, you know, these are always upgrading times. This whole window period is. But, yeah, they, they just want to digress and divert us and distract us away. And, and so people like us are going to refuse that and, um, and hopefully inspire people to begin to let go. Almost like when you have a friend that's in a terrible relationship and they don't see it. They don't want to see the red flags. And eventually it gets so obvious that now they see what you're saying without us having to be like, ah, oh, in a panic about where everybody else is headed because everybody's in their own process. We have to just trust. They'll come back around even if they get kind of far off course. Unconditional love of source energy is a magnet to souls. And, and in the galactic history and the greater picture of galactic beings, they're always restoring and, and making up for what their race decided to do or how it might have become engineered, genetically modified. It, it always makes corrections. So in the larger scheme of things, we're all going to be okay. We have to remember that. I definitely needed to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, and Craig, you know, what just happened before I got on here, but, you know, I think too, I, for me, I have to remember when there are relationships separating or when there's things that seem like rough, like any anytime there's been like a breakup or a shift, it's, it kind of, I had a tendency to take things really super personal and like want to fix it and like cling on and fight for it. And, um, but the last few, I mean, you know, found out someone was embezzling, you know, all that, you know, just like clean breaks and like oh other stuff happening. And then it's just like, you know what? Um, I have found better people who I, paid less and did 10 times more and actually had like a team kind of spirit, like a good vibe or a feeling, you know, that there was more of a family feel of someone who actually believed in me and what we were doing. And instead of just like a job that like they got paid and barely did stuff or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, but I guess it, that what you just said about like people coming back around or maybe not, and they're just on their way and, like just having that perspective of like, you know what, that's what they need to do right now and let them go and not like try to like hold on so much and fight or make it, you know, be heard or justify it or explain or, you know, it's just like, you know what, it is what it is and it's okay. People are just, you know, stay neutral and stay where they are and just believe that everything is for me. Everything is for you. If you guys are going through whatever you're going through, wherever you're out there and you're having that and you're seeing that, just trust that everything is going to work out no matter what. Like Laura said, I, I just had a friend that um, contacted me this week and their flight was like canceled and they're trying to get home and doing all this stuff and um, ended up because of what they did, they got like money back for a flight. They got on this other flight where his wife and kids were on the same flight and they all got to fly together. I mean, just, it's like, if we could just chill and be like, you know what? Cool. And realize that sometimes our energy, well, not sometimes our energy is creating things anyway. And it could just be your strong energy or my strong energy that's moving people out and bringing the right people in 
and or the situations, whether it's a job, a partnership, work situation, vehicles, like whatever, you know, it's just like relax, you know, and I'm saying that to myself, but what do you like, what are you guys seeing? I love what you said about being neutral. And I also liken it to like, I don't know, a car or, you know, not going moving forward or reverse, but neutral and sort of like, just instead of getting angry and demagnetizing things and causing like any kind of damage, because look, I can be very, I could get like really mad and, you know, I do, I have like, you know, you have like walk around and rage all the time, but I just think it's really important just to, and, and I just read all these like stories about if you do like have an explosive, you know, anger attack, it will last like for seven hours. And that's like doing damage to your own soul and to your, and to your body that does damage to your body. So I think keeping things in neutral and trying to, I don't know, ask for divine protection. I do that all the time. I always call in, you know, all the saints in heaven and everything and just ask for divine protection and try to channel the best energies to me. And I don't do it enough, but I mean, I do have faith that that's what's happening. Faith. 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 And this is a time of faith. So this is maybe when we need it in triple, triple faith. You know, yeah. this is a time of faith and joy and happiness. So I maybe embrace more of that. Definitely. I think a lot of people have misunderstood faith. I think they think it's um, <clears throat> like a almost a, a subservience, whereas actually it's uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. it, like faith in the ego is you know, a lot of people are like, I can do this, I will do this. <clears throat> Whereas I think true faith is a surrender to the higher power. And it's a case mm -hmm. of in this higher power, now I can do it really by being at rest. Right. You know, faith and rest go hand in hand. Mm, um, or trying to make it happen through faith. It, that's not faith, you know. Um, <clears throat> and I just think, um, I, like you say, I think this is a, a really good time to talk about things like this. But, the, you know, I think the transition is rather than um, <clears throat> even faith in God, something like that. It, the fact that God has faith in you, that empowers you, you know? Okay. And I hear that all the time. Faith in God. <clears throat> what does that even mean? Right. <laughs> I think it's just creation because God is so vast. I mean, it's just but, in yeah, nature. And, Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, and God is in us and ourselves. Of course. You know? So it's like, really, we're creating again. It's like the, the radiation of God through us Ooh. in the field that's creating all the time, one way or another. Yeah. Good, there is no good and bad. It's just creation all the time, all the time. So when people don't do shit because they're like, well, I trust God, that pisses me off, honestly. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's a lot about the prayer. Like you're, you're going to give it to somebody else to solve and yeah. you're praying and you have yeah. faith that, and then it doesn't happen. And then people become atheists. God doesn't love me. My prayers didn't come true. But we have to be prayers in action. We have to hold the intent. We have to, we have to, you know, be the vehicle that God expresses itself through by connecting with our higher self and, and holding a strong intent and being manifestors. Cause if we just keep looking outside of ourselves and expecting to be saved or somebody else is going to, you know, we have faith in that. Well, we have to co-create and have faith in our relationship with it instead. Don't yes. you think? Or Yes. Yes. You said it so well. Yeah. I also think there's something in like Padre Pio, who is this, be this beautiful saint. He would say, pray hope and don't worry. And Aww. I love that because it's like the worry is like the thing that disconnects you from source. Yes, it's yeah. like lack of faith, mm -hmm. right? It's like, oh, I'm so afraid this isn't going to happen. Whereas opposed to being a conduit and letting source energy, God consciousness flow through you and being, you know, God's source in action, like we're saying. So I just think faith is like knowing that you're, you are God in action. You are consciousness in action. And knowing that whatever you do is like the right thing and not wearing and not cutting off that connection. So good. Because faith is the opposite of fear, mm -hmm. which is worry. Yeah. 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 So when we see it already done and keep and hold that image and use our imagination to image a nation or a world or a life. Love that. That is how we really see things happen is keep holding those pictures out picturing 
the people who are picturing something negative. It's like, no, I'm going to out picture you. I'm going to out image you, you know, and holding those, you know, even if you have to do a vision board or pictures or whatever you got to do to, to keep the imagery in the already done of what you choose, you know, that's, that's, um, anyway, so I know we got to wrap this up. It's been fun. Can you guys like get any final words and like how to find you guys? Sure. Okay. My name, well, we know my name, um, cosmicguide.org. And uh, I have a webinar J January 26th. And Charnel and I are going to be doing uh, something together in February. We're just fine tuning those details. We're going to do a day of readings, right? Yes. Yeah. So we got that going on. And uh, you can find pretty much everything on my website, the events I'll be doing, more about the webinar and my subscription and the readings that I do. And I do uh, Divine Mother Earth Time with uh, Marisa Acachella, who's here with us today. And we're posting on Rumble. We're going to um, continue to do that. And uh, yeah, so find me on Rumble. I don't have a YouTube anymore. And it's been great to be here. I love you guys. Thank you so much. It's always amazing to be on these panels and uh, roundtables. And I'm Marisa Acachella, and I'm so grateful to be here with you guys. And I was really, really looking forward to today and um, sharing and talking about truth and love and faith and hope. And I just think this is a, like the most beautiful time to just really recognize what's important in our lives and embrace the consciousness and, and really become who the divine humans we were meant to be. So I'm really happy to be here with you, Charnel, and Craig, and of course, Laura, who I have, I'm so happy I have Divine Mother Earth time with you. And you could find me, Marie Sacacella, at Instagram and Facebook. And I don't know about YouTube anymore because I keep taking down my art <laughs> videos. So anyway, thank you again and Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, happy holidays to everyone. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Happiness and joy and love. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Right, um, right. Yeah, well, I mean, I've got like the busiest year imaginable uh, already lined up next year. So much going on. Um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, usual socials for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually, I, we announced it the other day that um, one of the bands I'm playing for were playing some gigs in the UK. Any UK people out there, hit my Facebook page and go and, you know, uh, come and see us. That'd be good to meet you. Um, <clears throat> gee. <sighs> I think what else there is. Um, yeah, I've got my uh, meditation channel music. I'm going to uh, do that. I've uh, got some projects that hopefully I'll be able to sort of talk about more soon. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, hit me up on Facebook. Awesome. And I'm going to just say again, if you guys could do me a favor and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Again, <laughs> I mentioned this at the beginning for those who weren't here at the beginning. We have a lot of people who come on the show and watch and they don't subscribe and it really helps us if you subscribe. So if you could hit that subscribe button and share this, it helps us with the algorithms. They did take her channel away. Uh, Carmen is on here. Hey, Carmen. She said they take all the good people away from YouTube. We want to stay. It's a badge of honor, it's a badge of honor nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys to... get back on? I can't. Anyway, we can talk about that later. Anyway, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So please help us. And thank you for all the members. I want to say Debbie's on here and Heather and Jenny Long. There's quite a few members here. Heather J. Lori, thank you guys. Without you guys, um, we wouldn't be able to keep doing this. Um, Victoria, thank you for your kind um, super that you sent us today to help us do this. There's a lot of cost in it, believe it or not, a lot of time. So if you guys ever feel like giving a little back, that's be great too. And um, But we love you and we love you and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and all the things. And next week we have um, Luke. How do you AG. say it? AG, I think. AG, which is interesting. AG. Yeah, we're going to talk about immort immortality, considering his name is AG. That's kind of neat. Um, <laughs> an age. That, yeah. Yes, but um, we're going to talk about immortality and immortal you and just the whole like spirit of immortality. 
and um, jump into that because we are immortal, believe it or not. And this is all based on a dream and some different things that happen in his book. So t- tune in next week on Thursday. Um, we're here every Thursday at noon and just love you guys. And um, I think that's it. Yeah, you could go to drshornell.com. And also I'm on Instagram, Dr. Shornell. I'm on Twitter, Dr. Shornell. If you guys could find me there, I would love to keep the connection with you guys. And I'm really good about answering and messaging and all that kind of stuff. That's how I stay connected with you guys. So mucho love to you guys and um, have a great rest of your week. And I'm going to go put up my tree in a little bit. So talk soon. Bye, guys. Thank you for everybody being here. I love you so much. Love you. Bye. Bye.